honestly, I would hear a lot of it in my mind just like that. Zoom, get that, get doom, get the back, get doom, get the back, get doom, get black, black, that, take it back. So, like, you've talked about how this back and forth, it's sort of like um, tap dancing, or that you saw coming from musical theater a kind of rhythm in what Aaron was doing. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, when I, when I first was blessed to join the cast, I mean, all I kept hearing was there's a certain way that Aaron approaches his, his words, and you have to be able to, you know, I guess go along with it. And once I first, I guess when I watched the pilot, really, from the time I watched the pilot, I heard the rhythm of it. From the time I heard Aaron's words and I heard the banter between everybody, it all, it all clicked in my mind of this is, this is a, an orchestration. This is one big composition. And you have to just play your note, play your tune, and as, and as it all comes together, it'll make a, a beautiful song. And once I, once I tapped into that, okay, here we go. I'm gonna pass it to you. You're gonna pass it over here to Martin. Martin's gonna pass it to me. Then I'm gonna pass it to Josh, and I'm gonna pass it to <laughs> you know. It just became a it became rhythm. But honestly, I would hear a lot of it in my mind just like that. Zoom, get that, get doom, get the back, get doom, get that, get that, get that, get that, get that, get that. I mean, that's how I. That's how I would hear. There, there, and you and you did actual tap dancing like while you were waiting to do stuff. I heard that um, Catherine oh, yeah. Houston sometimes would like. Let's get stop tap dancing around me. I gotta focus. Well, well, yeah, I mean, I would dance pretty much any, any and everywhere on the set, whether it was on the sound stage, out in my trailer, in between my trailer and the sound stage, uh, in Allison's trailer, in Martin's trailer, it didn't matter. I would, I would dance. And here was only one place that I was not allowed to dance, and that was in Mrs. Landingham's office. <laughs> she was insistent. She loved my dancing. She loved. I mean, she loved it. I could dance in the portico, I could dance in the Oval Office, I could dance in the Roosevelt Room. I just could not dance in Mrs. Landingham's office. If I would start, she would just peer from her glasses. <laughs> you want to know where you made your mistake? I didn't make a mistake. You probably did, and here's where you went wrong. Where? You went to the dealership alone. Yes. That was a mistake. Because the dealer would load me up with a lot of extras I don't need. That's right. Like a, a tow package. How are you going to tow your camper without a tow package? I have never been camping. Neither have I, and I was hoping you'd take me. I'd be sitting there fishing, listening to the Orioles on a transistor radio. What would I be doing? Warding off bears, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. How much did you pay? We don't talk about money, dear. Talk about the best duet that Dulé did on the show. Uh, which was with Yo-Yo Ma. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when we did the Yo-Yo Ma piece. Oh. Uh, and, you know, it, that was an extraordinary for all of us, that Yo-Yo Ma showed up. He showed up at you know, 6.30 in the morning before call uh, with it, you know, a cello on his backpack, basically. Stradivarius uh, on his back. Yeah, Stradivarius, but right. <laughs> uh, which allowed everyone to play. And so it, it was an amazing moment. Oh, I mean, look at that. Moment. Look at the picture uh, Martin has. Mar 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 right Martin is yeah. holding up. Oh, look at that. So, for some, so yeah. Martin Sheen is telling us that Yo-Yo Ma let him just manhandle probably, what, a four or five million dollar... Yeah. Yo, yo, mom. And by the way, it was it was the, it was a personal lesson, fifty dollars an hour. <laughs> be a little bit more populist about this. It wasn't just Martin Sheen who was maybe number Everybody. one on the call sheet. It was anyone who was there. It was right. actors who were there, and anyone. He was so open to that. Uh, I had sort of told him at one point when he first showed up in the morning. I had said, "Oh, it's so great that you're here. We're going to pre-record everything, and then." You don't have to worry about playing it each time. And he went, oh, don't worry about that. And I went, no, it's probably better for filmmaking. And he knew what I was saying. He said, so you're worried about the metronome of this. Don't worry about that. I'll play it the same way. Don't worry. Uh, and he did for like 74 takes. Uh, he was doing it, doing it to different people. Did he play it well? Show your mom. I've never heard him in person. That's really... It's really quite something. But the most amazing moment of that whole time was Dulé coming up to him and sort of going, uh, I'm having trouble. What is this? And as I remember it, Dulé, he was going, it's just 4-4 four, four time. It's just 4-4 four, mm -hmm. four time. And then it was like Dulé went, oh, it's just 4-4 four, four time. And then Dulé started to do this tap dance. And mm -hmm. Yo-Yo Ma started playing the cello. And it was the most beautiful moment of just the absolute essence of creativity. Uh, that just came out of this moment for all of us to witness. Probably yeah. for Dulé, an amazing moment. Oh, yeah. uh, but for all of us, it was, uh, you know, a pretty much a highlight of 
our, our days at West Wing that we get to witness this by doing this job. I remember I would say he, he would say he was like he would stretch the notes. It was four four time, but he would stretch the beats, and that was the thing I could not grasp until finally it mm -hmm. just clicked for me, and I, under, I understood where he was going, and I could hear where he was going, and to be able to finally get a chance to really make music with him was an absolute joy. And I think he recorded it, Tom, if I'm not mistaken. I think there's B-roll somewhere. Yeah, there is B-roll somewhere. We seem where is to that B-roll? And it's one of the great, uh, I, somewhere this exists and someone's gonna find it again. Uh, <laughs> the B-roll the the is in my mind as a great memory, just so you know, Dulé. It was one of the great things that Tommy described so beautifully, but to watch you kind of struggle along with your feet to try to find, um, uh, find the music so that you could move to it, it was just a stunning moment uh, to witness.